Tony D and Little Joan, and this is a screenwriter's rant on Davy and Jonesy's Locker, which has nothing to do with the ocean. Uh, has to do with these two girls who are best friends in high school who discovered the multiverse in one of their lockers. And yeah, it kind of goes downhill from there. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Heart in South Jersey. It's the Pineys books 1 through 13. Available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. This movie, or well, it's a TV show, it feels like um, one of those shows that would have been on Nickelodeon. Only <clears throat> not funny. It's really... Uh, uh, pushing the multiverse hard and it's two leads just I don't know for my money they're just not funny enough to carry this thing I'm just gonna say it they just you know uh, I think what you needed was two stand up comics they're trying I'll say this they're not it's not for lack of trying they're trying to be funny but they're just not funny um, and there's a, a line in the movie where, where the blonde girl is saying to the principal, like, something like, uh, girl boss, she -E -O, like, that's supposed to be a funny line. That, I think, is the level of comedy. It feels like, uh, uh, someone sat down to try to do a feminist version of a high school comedy. And this is the result. And it's, it's, their episodes, they're on Hulu. Um, you know, everybody's worried about them because they're too close friends. It doesn't make it, the show doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then they discover a scientist who's got a gateway. And this is the, I guess, the principal. And she's supposed to be the bad guy, I guess. Again, does, seems totally miscast. Like, everybody in this doesn't seem to be cast uh, well. Um, and there's, like, a multiverse thing where they are put in a high school. Like, we don't even know who these characters are, and they're already in a multiverse. That's not a good thing, in my view. Uh, one of the characters is a guy who's trying to be their friend. He's trying to be funny. He's slightly funnier than the girls, quite frankly. This guy is trying to carry the whole show by himself. He's like the evil scientist who has access to the multiverse for some reason. I guess it's a, a team of versions of him. So I guess he's the best actor that they put in that role. Um, yeah, it's just, it just doesn't look good. They're trying to do something that would, I guess, appeal to young girls. I can't see guys watching this. Like, I was a young guy watching TV. And, uh... This feels like middle-aged people talking down to teens. They're using ideas that I feel are extremely lazy. It's extremely lazy to do the multiverse thing in something that, you know, you need really, um, you need a very uh, clear universe to make the multiverse thing even work, number one. Is that's going to be the heart of the show? What are you going to do in season two? You're going to do it again? You're just going to keep doing multiverse stuff? Like, that doesn't scan. Multiverse is, is like, starting with that is like putting the cart before the horse. That's something you do after the show's established. And these two, and these two don't look funny. They look like two... Female actresses trying to be funny. Um, I don't know if they're actual stand-up comedians. 
Um, but that would have helped. Or two improvers who are really good, maybe. Like, like an Amy Poehler maybe could have pulled this off. Amy Poehler and uh, who could be... Now, the obvious answer would be Tina Fey. Maybe. Like, Tina Fey's the smart one. Amy Poehler's the crazy one. Maybe you could have made this work. But they're kind of at the top of their game. And they're kind of rare. Uh, there's not a lot of funny women. There's just not. It's, it's hard to be funny. And women tend to be not funny. Not because women can't be funny. They can be. But they... Most women are about, to some extent, their image. And to be a comedian, you have to be self-deprecating. You, you can't have... I can see it in the eyes of both these two actresses. They have that hesitation. That hesitation that they're not going to do the thing that would be self-deprecating or make them look foolish. They just don't look that way. Amy Poehler doesn't have that reflex. She's completely either trained herself out of it or never had it to begin with. She's willing to make herself look extremely foolish and has on many occasions. Tina Fey um, always sort of plays the same character. She can kind of get away with being sort of the smart, funny one. She's... I don't think she has as big a big of a comedic range. Now they're both obviously too old for this role, but what you needed here were two girls who are willing or a script willing to really like even the that I I did that trailer uh, analysis for Bottoms. The two girls in that were funnier. Um, they maybe could have pulled this off a little better. But the material on Bottoms was at least so vulgar, it kind of almost made up for the lack of, uh, you know. They, they were on the bottom of that, so to speak, of the, of the totem pole. But that was a different kind of a, a movie. This is a TV show. For the TV show to work, you would have needed two very strong traits from both these characters, what their deal is. The only deal they establish in the trailer is that they're both friends and they have a weird codependent relationship. They say it, but they don't show you it. So like if you showed these two eating together every day in a montage, and it would only have to be a few seconds long, like a montage of every day they eat in the same spot and they're always together and they're so in sync with each other. And they're not girlfriends. They're not gay. But they're so in sync with each other. Like one is chewing gum and spits it into the other's mouth. And the other's just he, the other girl just keeps chewing it. Like that would have been a funny bit, right? Mm -hmm. I think I'm done with this gum. Oh, I'll take it. And she just chews it like it's nothing. Because they're that in sync as friends that they're not bothered by that. Not that they're gay. Like, you do bits like that, and you really push the idea that these two are like this. But I don't really see that in the trailer, and it's not funny. They're, like, reaching for these multiverse things, but you don't know what the baseline is. So, doing the multiverse thing doesn't really help, unless you go with, say, something historical, right? So, you do the the age-old multiverse thing of they go into another universe and the British won the Revolutionary War and everybody's British. Like, that you could do. That makes a certain amount of sense in the multiverse sort of milieu. It's strong enough, you'll notice it. And, uh, you know, it's not going to go... Like, I don't know what their high school's normally like, so how am I supposed to know what the multiverse is like? Like... The other actors, maybe? Like, you kind of see a little bit. Like, there's a guy who's into both of them, I guess. And he 
tries to drink a soda to impress them, and then later in the multiverse, he's like a jock. Like, but you need, but like, he looks the same. He's just wearing like a Letterman jacket. You need to go further than that. Or you needed to show like three different versions. Like, okay, in one universe, he's a jock. In another universe, he's an emo. In another universe, I don't know, he's a greaser from the 50s. Like, something. And it needed to be very distinctive and very strong for it to work. Otherwise, it's like you're just telling us what this is about. And that's what the trailer feels like. You're telling me about what the TV show's about, hoping that I go, well, I don't really see it here, but I'll watch the show anyway. Um, yeah, it's not going to work for me. Now, the show's not aimed at me. It's not for me. But it doesn't feel like they're putting enough effort behind it to really make it work. Like, you got to come out strong when you have a new show. Like, the first episode has to hammer home the concept hard. And if you're talking the first season, it should hammer it home hard. If this is going to be like Rick and Morty going to different multiverses, then you have to show us why these multiverses will be different from the superhero ones, Rick and Morty, and all the other ones. And the way you could exploit that is you could say, well, the reason they can survive in the multiverse so well is they're such tight friends that their friendship can't be broken. And they're so in sync with each other in a weird way. Um, they're always outside the rest of the group. And that sort of being outside uh, protects them in some way. They're always in sync with each other so they can always sort of escape. And um, when you see people add this pseudoscience stuff to try to sell this, and it's just pathetic nonsense words designed to like, I don't know, get to the next scene or whatever. Like, none of the kids are buying this premise. There's, you know, kids are stupid, but they're not that stupid. They're not going to listen to this and go, oh yeah, that sounds like a credible reason why the multiverse and their traveling dimensions, you know, through a, through a gym locker. Like, that, none of that sounds credible. Like, you at least have to make that semi-credible. Like, the scientist character has to be semi-serious. At least serious enough that we can buy the premise a little bit. And he shouldn't be silly on top of everybody else in the damn thing being silly. Because then, I mean, I don't know. I don't know who would even follow this. Like, you know, one episode in, you'd be, like, bored with it. Because everybody's just a silly, goofy character and none of, none of the stakes are real. You gotta have real stakes in it, to some extent. Or it has, or the comedy has to be so on point it doesn't matter. It has to be like police squad level of comedy. I'm not seeing any of that here. It just feels like, I don't know, a bunch of people got together and say, oh yeah, do this. And they're just doing it and punching a clock and calling it a day. Would I watch this? Not in a million effing years. Not in a million effing years would I watch this show. Because it feels that lazy to me. I mean, you can watch it, I guess, if you have Hulu. It doesn't cost you any more than you're already paying for Hulu, but... I don't know. I, I, I Are kids stupid? Yeah, kids are pretty stupid. Are they this stupid? I don't think they're that stupid. Anyhow, that's just my opinion. And that's it for me, Tony D. and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, Bitchute, and Rumble for our more base takes. It's so late, I can't do my Piney podcast tonight. I'm going to do one tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one.